Welcome to Chris BI. Today we're going to be going over how you'd get data from like Excel into Power BI and automate those refreshes. My name is Chris Wagner. I'm a Microsoft MVP. I've been working with Power BI for like 14, 15 years. And this is like the number one question I keep getting asked. So let's go to it. All right. So when we're talking about getting data from a file, into Power BI, there's kind of two different paths. And this is not the great path, so I don't want you to start here, but I want you to be aware of it. If the file is like on your laptop or on your desktop or on an on-prem server, server, there needs to be a secure manner for the Power BI cloud service to reach down and get that Excel file. That comes through the, the form of a Power BI gateway. You have to do all these configurations. This is a, just kind of a, a bad way to do this. Now you can avoid the gateway altogether if you store your data in OneDrive. And what does that mean? Because OneDrive is like, okay, so I'm storing in OneDrive. Where is that data really? Really, that means if you're putting it in SharePoint, the data is actually being stored in OneDrive. If you put the data in Teams, it's actually SharePoint, which is actually OneDrive. So like if you're using any of the common cloud saving techniques, for your data for collaboration this is a great way this works fundamentally okay let's head over and let me show you okay so i've got i'm kind of spoiling the lead here uh i've got this um uh this uh team site where i'm going to be managing all of my data so i'm going to put the data in a data folder that i'm going to be using for my team okay so you can see there's one file out here back to internet sales right i can if i want i can go ahead i can click on it and it's going to open it up um uh inside of uh you know excel i can open on that up inside of the desktop app which i'm going to do yeah, go ahead open up excel always do that all right this same file, if I said uh, open in SharePoint, you can see that's in SharePoint. So right, the, the front end way of getting to this through Teams or SharePoint, same thing, data is in OneDrive, okay? Now, this is the file I wanna connect to. I don't want to do like any of the sort of like C file or anything that says C drive or S drive or anything along those lines, I don't wanna do because it's not gonna give me a refreshable path. All right, so if I go file and I go to uh, info and I click on copy path, I'm gonna get a pretty good uh, uh, URL. This is actually the URL I want. I want one that gives me uh, the name of the SharePoint site uh, and I want it to end in that fact, internet sales.csv. So this is where I want, this is the value that I want to get. Okay. But if I look at what I got from here, I'm going to see my URL has something on the end here that I don't want. It's got that question web equals one. Now in the past, we always had to go in and delete this. I'm just going to delete that right off um, to get this right. But <laughs> last week I found a faster way. Uh, thanks. Thank you, Eunice, for showing me this. If I want that URL, all I have to do is I can stay inside of uh, my Teams drive. If I click on the little ellipses here, and then I click on uh, more properties. Oh, no, that was it. I was wrong. Ah, my whole thing's getting screwed up here. Stop it. Go away. Ah. If I click on the ellipses, if I say copy link, look what happens. I get this like, and I can click copy and I'll go over and I will paste it here. And you'll see it's this weird long link. This is the link to actually open in Excel online. If I would have just clicked on it, like save that link before, this is what I would get. I don't want this, okay? This is not what I want, all right? What I wanna do, is I wanna to go to uh, the ellipses and I wanna go down to uh, details. There it is, under details, way down at the bottom, if you scroll down, you can see this thing called path and these little ellipses right by it, okay? So right here is what you want, All right? If I click on that, 
and I go back into my uh, notepad, I can see, oh, it's right here. It's the exact format that I need. So this is the file that I'm gonna want. So I'm gonna like head over to my, um, uh, my Power BI file. Oh my gosh. And then I'm gonna go over to get data. And I'm gonna make sure I click on web, okay? Do not click on Excel, Do like, this is bad. Don't click on that thing. Don't click on the, this Excel workbook up here too. This one's bad too. Don't, don't use it. Click on the web link. And when it comes up, you just paste in that URL string that ends in CSV or ends in Excel or whatever, right? Ends in the value. Click on okay. Now, it's gonna be important that you go down to organizational account and then sign in from there. Okay, I'm gonna sign in. It's gonna ask me for auth. I'm gonna say connect. It's gonna then connect to it. I'm gonna see my data. Always go over to the far right hand side, make sure your last column's supposed to be your last column, then click on load. All right, this is then gonna load into my model. And I'm gonna just do something really simple here. I'm gonna violate all of my rules. I'm gonna take my sales amount. I'm gonna stick that in as a visual because I need to just, honestly, I, I wanna be able to just publish this really quickly, all right? So we'll change that to a grid. Ah, don't do that. Update. Right. So we're going to change this to a grid. I'm going to save this as file. Save as. Oh no, I already have it. I already saved it as CSV to Power BI. I'll hit save. I will then publish. Go down to my reports. Hit select. Save it. It's going to publish out to the service. Now I'm not done. Okay. This is connected my Power BI report to that backend data set, but I want to quick, I want to go out into the service. I want to show you there's something you need to do here, okay? So I've got this set up. I'm going to go in, I'm going to see that the report publishes correctly, which yay, it did. But if I go into reports, I've got to find the semantic model for this one, right? So I've got to find that CSV to Power BI. CSV to Power BI, here's the semantic model. I'm going to go into the button, click settings, and I have to make sure that I go in and edit the credentials so that I assign that it's going to be a, an a OAuth and then I set it as, I mean, I'm going to say none in this case. Uh, you could you choose a setting upon your, what you need. I'm going to say sign in. I'll sign in. It's going to be good to go. Now that I've connected it, I'm going to go in and I'm going to set up a refresh schedule, okay? So I'm gonna add a time and say, I want it to refresh at 6 a.m. and 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. and 3 p.m., okay? This means that this uh, report will update on a regular basis throughout the day. So if I've got people making updates to, to something, I've, I, can, I can catch these updates you know, throughout that, the course of the day, okay? Um, now all I have to do is head back to my reports and this is the final step. Always make sure you test this last little piece, which is the refresh of the semantic model, not the refresh of the report, the refresh of the semantic model. Hit run. We're gonna see that it executes over here. All right, it's running, it's doing its load thing. It's done. It's got its next refresh set at 11 a.m. And uh, I can even go back into settings and uh, uh, go to my refresh history right here and see that it completed successfully. I mean, I knew it completed successfully because there are no error messages, but like this is what you can do, all right? Now, I hope you found this useful because uh, this is like people ask me this, like, I don't know, every few weeks people are asking me this one. So hopefully you, this will be beneficial for you. If you like it, Make sure you like the, like the video, if, subscribe to the channel, share it inside your COEs for like, how do you make these things work? Because you don't need a gateway like this. You could just 
have your data out in SharePoint or Teams or OneDrive and just do all your refreshes there and you're, you're just ready to go, okay? Uh, if you have any questions, do leave your questions down below. Uh, and heck, if you're finding this stuff way too difficult and challenging, head over to krosbi.com, uh, and then there's a link right at the top that says, get yourself a data guide, click on that, and myself or one of my associates will reach out to you, and you know, we'll, we'll see what we can do to help you out, all right? You have a great day, peace. Baker Tilly Digital combines strategic industry insight and advanced technical expertise to uncover and solve your digital transformation challenges. If you're interested in learning more, check out our website at bakertilly.com digital.